911, what's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton. And in today's episode, I thought we could talk a little bit about how when somebody tells us no, or when the world tells us no, almost always it means not right now. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's content. So what do I mean by no doesn't really mean no, it just means not right now. I have a really close friend, somebody who I've cultivated such a rich and deep relationship with that it is, it is unlike anything that I've ever had. And this particular individual, I know that they have been looking for a partner and it's been a long road. It hasn't been easy for this individual to find the love that they're looking for. And it's hard, right? As you listen to this, think about any breakups that you might have had in your past or even your current relationship right now. Not only finding love is difficult, but being in love is also difficult. And imagine having this pretense set up where you you thought that you would be at a certain stage in your life and you would have already had that figured out. Well, my friend, they they don't have that figured out quite as quite as they thought that they would. And it's not easy going through the motions of of dating. And now we have online dating. And I I can't even imagine what dating would be like. I've said that before, but I don't even know if something ever happened to to Clint or to Clint and I, I don't even know that I would ever want to date. So if you're listening to this and you are that person, somebody who's kind of going through the motions of of doing that, I, I definitely applaud you for putting yourself out there in the way that you're forced to in today's modern world. It's not easy. I, and I know this only based on what other people tell me, clients and friends and people who experience online dating or dating in person nowadays. It just seems like a much different world than it was when I was dating Clint and I have been married now for 12 and a half years, and we were together for a total of a year before we got married. So I just don't know what what that would look like, what that what that experience would be like. But for my friend, this person keeps keeps dwelling on the fact that things just don't look the way that they thought that they would. You know, they're they're older in life and everything else around this person's circle is settled. However, that that one key element, right? That other person that you would have maybe always seen in existence or, or felt would always be there it just doesn't exist for this person and they want it so badly they want it. And, you know, I'm very close in communication with this individual and this person has had a lot of health ailments and just random shit happening, especially for this month of August. And it's it's like thing after thing. A lot of these weird medical problems are coming up and nothing, thank goodness, extensive, but things that are time consuming. And I know you know what I'm talking about, where maybe you have an, an unexpected, I don't know, a thing that you get something in your eye. My kid brother, I was over at my dad's house yesterday and my kid brother is most certainly the baby of the family. And my dad unexpectedly was having some house party or something. He does random stuff sometimes, but he was having this pool party at his house. And I went over there to do some work and I could hear my dad's loud voice talking about how Matthew got something in his eye and they're making this big commotion and I'm in the center of the house inside of my dad's office so I can kind of hear a little bit from every direction in the house and I just I remember thinking like my mom wasn't there so I needed to step up and be the mother in that moment and it was just petty in my head I just remember like there are much bigger problems going on in the world right now and like the whole world just came crashing down in that home because my little brother got something in his eye, so I looked in my purse, and I have a tactical flashlight, so I grabbed that, and I knew I had some eye drops, so I grabbed those, and I went out and closed the door behind me because I had my, everything set up, and I, honestly, I didn't even know who was at my dad's house. It's That's another episode, but um, I remember walking out, and I go into the kitchen, and the sink is on, and Matthew is there just bent over, washing his eyes and face off with water, and he doesn't know I'm there. And I just I just stand there sort of with this fake empathy, <laughs> trying to make sure that it's showing on my face because he gets very emotional. Um, 
and he was drying his face and he looks and he sees me and I see this like poor baby kind of change in his demeanor. And he, I told him like, dry the rest of your face, Matthew. And I bring him closer to me and I take his chin and I push it up and I tell him, Matthew, I know that these eye drops don't burn, so don't act like they do. And I grab my flashlight and I told him to look the other way and I shine my light inside of his eyes and I see he has, and I'm sure that if you have dogs especially, this has happened to you before, but he has he has this long fur that is like tangled underneath the lens of his eye and it's also tangled with his eyelashes. And so the first thing that I do is I tell him, like, be very still. And I take my fingernails and I grab it. And I could feel the relief that it must have felt as I'm pulling this long string of fur that was entangled on his poor eye. And I grab it and I tell him still not to move. And I'm shining my light because I don't want him to, you know, get blinded by my flashlight. And I take my eye drops and I put the eye drops in his eyes. And his eyes are blue. And I don't, I don't know why, but blue eyes always seem to reflect just how red people's eyes are when they do get red. And um, I put the eye drops in and then he, he was much better at that time. So the, the poor kid. <laughs> and so I'm telling you all of this because when things like this happen, they're a huge inconvenience to us when little medical problems like that start to come up. Because I'm sure his eye was probably red and uncomfortable for the rest of his day. And maybe that redness would prevent him from doing other things that he had wanted to do, like going and showing up in the world. And it's the same thing with this friend of mine that I'm talking about. And so what I explained to my friend is I think that the universe works in such a divine and uniform way that maybe the reason that this person hasn't had the type of exposure and dates and love and, you know, all of the, the things that this person's been looking for is because it's not quite time yet. But the, the no right now doesn't mean no forever. It just means no, not right now. And I think it's important to have pointed that out to this person because there, there are so many of these medical things that are going on. And imagine if you had my, my kid brother's eyeball is situation, only things like that happening all month long. And I told them that I think right now you're at this, this point in your life, this season where it's time for a little bit of maintenance, a little bit of just health and and body maintenance. We all need to have this sort of routine maintenance. Some people go to the doctor once a year. Some people do things, you know, for some self-love on a routine basis. And that's all that is happening right now. But imagine if you were to show up and have my kid brother's eye situation when you have dates planned or you're trying to to meet somebody and you're trying to, to cultivate those types of relationships. Like, you know, no, nobody really wants that. We don't feel like doing that. And I mean, in all honesty, like I wouldn't want to show up to a date and see my kid brother's eyes, not my kid brother, but somebody like my kid, obviously somebody like my kid brother showing up with these beet red eyes. And, you know, it's, it's OK that this is happening right now because there's so many other things that are going on in this person's world that it's just not the right timing right now. And the, the focus is different, right? When we have issues like this happening to us and they're compounding, our focus is so different that the reason why this probably is happening and playing out the way that it is, is because this this person's train of thought isn't focused and fixated and we're we're not always willing to show up and to devote that time and attention. It requires nurturing to start to cultivate relationships. And it certainly requires a significant amount of time for us to be able to to do the whole dating thing, to get into that scene and meet people. And of course, I know a lot of people that I talk to right now with all of these lockdowns and the limitations, it doesn't make it impossible, but it, it certainly is another impediment when it comes to putting yourself out there and meeting new people. So after having that discussion, discussion with this person and uh, sort of talking through the notions of this isn't, no, it's just not right now. It allowed them to see a little bit of glimmer of hope in in what they want in terms of their relationships and to, to give that hope to somebody and for us to be able to recognize in our own lives whenever we're experiencing what we think is a hard no, to just stop for a second and reflect on whether or not this really does mean no or does this mean not right now and then also to find the deeper meaning below that and what can we do now if, if it was this, this stage of maintenance, if that was me for example, like what else could I do right now to pour into my own health, my own 
body and to allow myself to really shine when this is all over and I do feel like I'm up to par and you know I'm I'm like this new engine that's ready to go out there and hit the roads again so It's an important thing for us to consider, just another thing to think on today. And I hope that as you go about your day, it is already an incredible day for you. And I'm sending you a big, tight hug from my home straight to you. 